of all the software running on the most popular devices in the world. The number one target, right, is the iPhone. And this is because the iPhone, uh, as secure as it is relative to a lot of other phones, uh, is a monoculture, right? Like if you, if you have an iPhone, you get these little software update notifications all the time that are like, hey, please update to the, the most recent version of iOS. And that's a fabulous thing. That's a wonderful thing for security um, because the number one way that people's devices get screwed, if it's not just through user error, right? Like you entering your password somewhere you shouldn't. It's like a fake site um, that looks like Gmail, but it's not actually Gmail. You just gave the guy your password. Now he uses your password to log in. But to actually break into a device is that it's not patched, right? Patch means getting these uh, security updates, these little code updates uh, that fix holes that researchers found in the security device. Well, uh, Apple's really good about rolling these out all the time for everybody in the world. The problem is basically all these different iPhones, right? You got an iPhone 6, you got an iPhone 8, you got an iPhone X, you got an iPhone, you know, 3, whatever. Uh, these are all running uh, a pretty narrow band of uh, software versions. And so these guys go, if they want to target, for example, Android phones, like Google phones, like a Samsung Galaxy or something like that. There's like a billion different phones made by a billion different people. Uh, half of them are completely out of date. But uh, what it means is it's not one version of software they're running, it's like 10,000. And this is actually bad for security on the individual level. Uh, but it's good for security in a very unusual way, which is the guys who are developing the exploits, the guys like this NSO group who are trying to find ways to break into phones, they now have to have like 50 different handsets running 50 different versions of software. They're all changing. They've got different hardware. They've got different chipsets. For the, like, they've got different, like all kinds of just technical variables that can screw up the way they attack uh, your phone. And then when they find one, it only works on like this Samsung Galaxy line. It doesn't work on like the Google Pixel line or it doesn't work on like a Nokia line or something like that. Whereas they realize if they find a way to attack an iPhone, which is actually, you know, this is difficult. This is really difficult stuff. Now it works against basically every iPhone. And who has iPhones? All the rich people, right? All the important people, all the lawmakers, all mm. the, the guys who are in there. So they've made a business on basically attacking the iPhone and selling it to every two-bit thug uh, who runs a police department in the world. You know, they sell this stuff to Saudi Arabia. They sell this to Mexico. And there's a group of researchers in Canada uh, working at a university called the Citizen Lab. 